Hello guys, Silver here. Today I'm going to show you the amazing power of Adobe Lightroom and how you can turn a horrible photo into a badass looking picture. Now, if you're new in Lightroom, you can download this picture from the link in the description and follow the process step by step. So first I'm going to make this photo straight by going to the transform section and try the auto tool. Now you can try the different tools here as level, vertical, full, but I think I'm going to choose between these two and yeah, I like the auto option better for this picture. So now we can go and apply some basic adjustments. I'm not going to touch the temperature and tint for this picture and also the exposure. I'm going to leave it as it is because I think it's well exposed, but I'm going to add some contrast to it. So around 39, it's okay. I'm going to bring down the highlights to minus 90 ish. Yep, that's okay. And the shadows, I'm going to bring down the shadows actually to minus 14. Yeah, I'm going to bring down the whites as well. To minus 86, I think it's okay. Yeah, that's really good. And I'm going to bring down the blacks to minus 8. Great. So here in the present section, uh, I want to add clarity, a lot more clarity, so we can hide those imperfections in the picture. And I think I'm going to 81. Now you can see already how much better this photo looks. I'm not going to apply the dehaze tool, but I do want to add some vibrance to it. So around 39, it's okay. And I'm going to add a little bit more saturation, just a tiny bit, plus five is okay. So let's play with the tone curve. Normally I would edit the point curve and choose RGB and, and play with each color, red, green, and blue. But just for this photo, I'm going to play directly from these sliders here. So I want to add some highlight to around 22. That's great. I'm going to add light to plus 13. Yep. I'm going to bring down the darks to around minus 7 and the shadows as well to minus 20. Yeah. That's really good. So let's see how this affects our photo. Here's the before and here's the after. Again, before and after. And you can see how much better it looks already. But we're not done yet. Let's play with the colors. First, I want to add some saturation to the red. So I come here and bring this to 14. That's okay. I don't want to add too much. And in the orange, I want to add some saturation as well. A little bit more this time. To around 30. Yeah, that's okay. In the yellows, I'm going to bring up the saturation to around 50. And the greens, this is important because you have strong greens here on the trees. So I'm going to uplift the saturation almost to 100 and bring down the luminance to minus 86. Yeah, that's really good. I'm not going to touch the aqua, but the blues, yep, I want to bring down the luminance to minus 20. And this always depends on the style you're looking for. I think minus 21, it's really good. 
and that's it let's see the before and after again before and after cool so let's apply some split toning because there is a lot of sunlight hitting the buildings here i want to add some orange to the highlights and around 54 is okay and the saturation you can always bring this up to 100 if you like if you that's your style but i want to keep it around 20 24 for this picture and i want some blues on the shadows so around here is fine and its saturation is going to be uh about 15 i think it, that's okay 16 that's okay so let's see the before and the after again before and after okay before we go on we're going to apply some lens correction to the photo and we're going to enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration and here's the before and after and now we can continue so let's apply some detail to our picture i do want some sharpening but i don't want to overdo it so i'm gonna bring this to 55 that's okay and i'm gonna apply some masking until i see the edges of the buildings i think around 40 is gonna be okay uh, 44 that's great and i'm gonna apply some noise reduction as well again normally i wouldn't because i'm not afraid of some noise in, in our pictures but this is a really really bad taken photo so i think it might need some luminance noise reduction i think that's okay and i'm gonna apply color noise reduction almost up to 100 that is okay now let's go to the calibration section and play a little with the saturation you can bring down or up the saturations that you want and the reds i think i want to go up to around 51 that's cool in the greens yeah i might want to be up to yeah up to around 50 50 58 that seems great to me and in the blues we're going to bring up saturation to uh, 35 that's great now i'm going to crop this image because i think these side buildings here and here are too distracting and i don't like them so up to here this one to here that is okay and this roof i think is distracting too so we're gonna cut it off as well and we're done now if you're wondering what these spots here and here are and all around the sky you see this photo was taken through a dirty window in a construction area so that's what you're seeing all around our picture now i have also applied some graduated filters and radial filters to our picture let me show you what did i do so if i switch this off you can see the before and after again before and after and for the graduated filters i've applied two of them and you can see the before and after again before and after and of course what you do with these filters always depends on the style you're looking for for example for this graduated filter in particular i have uplifted the blacks to plus 97 the shadows to 100 the contrast to minus 100 i made the tint a little bit more magenta and brought down the temperature but again it always depends on what you're looking for so i think our picture is ready 
But you might be wondering, Silver, what about the moon? I saw a moon here at the beginning of the tutorial. So we can't do that in Lightroom. So let's jump into Photoshop. And for that, I'm going to simply right click here and select Edit in Adobe Photoshop. So now we're in Photoshop, I'm going to press Ctrl J or Command J if you're in Mac to duplicate our layer and protect the original photo. Now I'm going to bring this photo of the moon I took a few weeks ago right here. That's OK. I'm going to put it around uh, here, I think. Press Enter and change the blending mode to screen. Now you see here it's all in Spanish because I'm from the beautiful country of Bolivia, but in the English version of Photoshop, you should see it as screen. Now let me tell you, I'm not a Photoshop expert. Almost 90% of what I know about Photoshop, I learned from this guy Unmesh Dinda from the Pix Imperfect YouTube channel. He's an amazing Photoshop guru, and if you want to learn more about this program, I encourage you to check his channel. Now we're going to bring the opacity down a little bit and I think around there is OK. Yeah, going to bring this moon a little bit, a bit more here. Yep, bring down more the opacity. Great, I like that. And finally, I'm going to apply a curves adjustment layer to our photo. Making a real nice S curve. That's fantastic. Let me show you the before and after of this adjustment layer. Before and after. Again, here is the before and after. So much better, isn't it? So there you go, guys. This is how you can take a horrible, horrible photo and transform it with the power of Adobe Lightroom. Now, we did use some Photoshop here, but it was just for the ending details. Our main edit was done in Adobe Lightroom. I hope you can take massive value of this tutorial. Hit me a like and subscribe for more upcoming photography techniques and post-production tutorials. See you later.